In the last video, we looked at how to predict the velocity and discharge for a system with a tank and a 1.25 meter long pipe using Bernoulli's equation accounting for losses in this system. And for the last few videos, I've been referring to this as a real system, which in one sense it absolutely is. The model is built out of real material, it's flowing with real water, which is experiencing real friction, viscosity and turbulence as it makes its way down the pipe. What I mean by calling this a real system is that it's not like drawing a made-up example on a piece of paper where I can make the parameters say whatever I like. Here we're actually measuring and predicting real processes. However, there's also a sense in which this is not a particularly good real-world example. There aren't many real-world systems with a total pipe length of 1.25 metres that are built just to recirculate water around a small room in a residential house. Real pipes are often very long. We often need to move water and other fluids over really long distances. And in this video, we're going to see if the same equation that we looked at in the last video to analyse my system will work for one of these really big systems of a really long pipe. So let's consider an example of a really long pipe. In the Victorian era, Birmingham in the UK was a fast growing city. It soon became the second largest city in the UK and remains that to this day. But as Birmingham grew, the demand for clean drinking water quickly overtook supply. So a new solution was needed to supply Birmingham with clean water. The easiest way to collect a large volume of water is to dam a river. But the terrain in the Midlands doesn't lend itself to dam building. Birmingham also, relatively speaking, doesn't get that much rain. This chart shows the average rainfall in the UK over a 30 year period. And as we can see, Birmingham gets between 700 and 800 millimetres of total rainfall a year, whereas there are parts of the UK that get more than 3,000. A perfect location, however, is the Elan Valley in Mid Wales. This part of the UK can get up to twice as much rainfall as Birmingham and the geography of the area is perfect for dam building. So this is what they did. In an astonishing feat of Victorian engineering, the Victorians built a series of four dams and reservoirs to store drinking water for Birmingham. Construction on these dams and reservoirs began in 1893 and was completed in 1904. And in total, the system can hold 100 million cubic metres of water. The only issue is that these reservoirs are more than 100 kilometres from where the drinking water is needed. So the solution was to build a really long pipe. And the pipe that links these reservoirs to Birmingham is 117 kilometres in total length. Another great benefit of the location is that the Eden Valley is located at a higher elevation than Birmingham, so the system could be completely gravity fed. There are no pumps anywhere along the pipe. Water makes its way from the Eden Valley in Mid Wales all the way to Birmingham, driven by gravity alone. So now we're looking at a really big system. This reservoir holds 100 million metres cubed of water and the pipe that takes the water to Birmingham is 1.5 metres in diameter and as we've already said, 117 kilometres long. However, in terms of the physics, this is actually exactly the same system that we've been looking at in my office at home. We have a tank, an outlet pipe, and a head difference due to elevation that's going to drive the flow. The physics of what's going on in the water flowing in this pipe 
is actually exactly the same as the physics of what's going on in my tank. So we can use exactly the same frameworks to try to analyse the system. We showed in the last video that we can use Bernoulli's equation accounting for losses to make accurate predictions of velocity in my system at home. So let's have a go at applying the same procedure for this much bigger system and see if it still gives accurate results. So in this example we have a large reservoir with a pipe that is taking water from a storage reservoir to a destination reservoir. The pipe is 1.5 metres in diameter and in order to meet Birmingham's drinking water demands the system needs to run at a velocity of 0.89 metres per second to provide a sufficient discharge to supply Birmingham with the water it needs. And the pipe has a total length of 117,000 metres. As this is a gravity fed system we know that the 0.89 metres per second of velocity in the pipe is being driven by the difference in elevation between the water surface of the reservoir and the outlet pipe. So let's see if we can work out what that elevation needs to be to give us a velocity of 0.89 meters per second. So let's apply Bernoulli's equation between the water surface of the reservoir and the outlet pipe. So let's call the water surface of the reservoir point 0.1 and where the water is leaving the outlet pipe, point two. As always in these type of examples, the pressure head at the water surface of the reservoir can be neglected because we're returning to atmospheric pressure and assuming atmospheric pressure is zero. The velocity head at the water surface of the reservoir can also be neglected because the velocity of the water surface of the reservoir is negligible compared to the velocity of water in the outlet pipe. At point number two, we can also neglect elevation because we're at the base of the system and we can neglect pressure head because again we're returning to atmospheric pressure at this point in the system. So we end up with the elevation at point one minus the total losses in the system equals the velocity head at point two. Because the pipe in this system is so long, continuous losses are likely to be massive compared to local losses, so we can actually neglect local losses in this system and just focus on continuous losses. So we can see that our velocity head at point 2 is going to be equal to our elevation at point 1, minus continuous losses. To find the elevation at point 1, we can just rearrange the equation for Z1. So we have the velocity of water in the flow, we know the pipe's diameter and the pipe's length, but we need to be able to estimate the friction factor to solve this equation. We can estimate the friction factor using the Moody diagram and the procedure that we described in Lesson 3 Part 3. So we'll just work through that quickly now. The first step is to find the flow's Reynolds number and Reynolds number is defined as the mean velocity times by the pipe's diameter divided by the fluid's kinematic viscosity. This gives us a Reynolds number of 1335000. We can then go to the Moody diagram and draw a line straight up from this Reynolds number from the x-axis. The next step in the process is to find the relative roughness of our pipe so we can decide which one of these blue lines is going to correspond to our pipe. This part of the process is a bit tricky as it's not easy to find exactly what material the pipe is made out of over its whole length and the roughness could well change over the length of the pipe depending on how well the pipe is being maintained. But I've made an estimate of the roughness of the pipe in this system as 0.25 millimetres, which seems like a reasonable estimate for the type of materials used in systems like this. And if we divide that by the pipe's diameter, we get the relative roughness 
has 0 0.0016. We can round this up as 2 times 10 to the minus 4 and highlight the relative roughness line that corresponds to this value. By finding the point at which the two lines cross and then drawing a horizontal line over to the y-axis, we can get the friction factor as the point where the y-axis is intercepted, which gives the friction factor of 0.014. We now have all the terms we need to solve the equation, so we can just plug the numbers into the equation. And this tells us that the water surface of the reservoir needs to be 44.1 metres above the pipe's outlet to allow the system to flow with a mean velocity of 0 0.89 metres per second. So the question is, how accurate is this prediction? If we have a quick look at the Wikipedia page for this system, we can see that the difference in elevation between the reservoir and the outlet is actually 52 metres. Given the assumptions we've had to make, and the uncertainty for such long systems, this is a pretty reasonable estimate of the final answer, showing that this method can work really well for even very long systems. Given that this is such a long system, and we've had to make a few assumptions, I'm really quite happy that this is a pretty accurate estimate. But we can have a quick think of how we could improve this by thinking about the assumptions we've made. Firstly, we have neglected local losses, and there will be some local losses in this system, and if we totaled them all up, it may well equal a few metres of elevation that would bring us closer to the final answer. We've also made quite a big assumption in assuming the roughness of the pipe is 0.25mm across the whole pipe length. If it was possible to get a completely accurate estimate of the average roughness across the whole pipe length, this may improve the accuracy of the prediction. I had a play with the Moody diagram for various different roughness values, and this can give a range of answers up to 10 metres difference from our final answer, which includes the exact elevation of the system. So in this lesson, we've learned how to apply Bernoulli's equation between two points in the system where we're accounting for losses. In the first video we looked at a model pipe that was 1.25 metres long, and in this video we've looked at a much larger, longer real system with a pipe length of 117,000 metres. But in all of this lesson we've been looking at gravity fed systems, where the system is driven by the difference in elevation between the water surface in the reservoir and the pipe's outlet. In my model tank, the difference in elevation of 0.209 metres was sufficient to drive water through our 1.25 metre long pipe. In the real world example looking at Elan Valley, the difference in elevation of just over 50 metres is sufficient to drive water along the 117,000 metres of pipe from the Elan Valley to Birmingham. But sometimes we don't have a difference in elevation that's large enough to give us the total pressure head required to drive the system. And in the next lesson, we're going to start to look at how we can add energy to our system if there's not enough total energy from gravity to fulfil our design brief.